I want to challenge you on the extent to which the Liberal Democrats deserve the first part of their name, uh, the Liberal part of their name. And of course, uh, I mean, you, you uh, well, you were already relatively famous at the time, but you rose to fame to some extent uh, through uh, the Orange Book, uh, which actually has a, 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 a remarkable book. I mean, the content's not bad, but what's actually remarkable about it is I think this is the only book in my lifetime published on politics, which is now more expensive on Amazon and eBay than at the point Why? of it, it was it was printed. It's, it, was, it was going for £8.99. They're about 12 quid to buy off eBay now. That so that was a be, fairly big success. That may be because of uh, Chris Renard. When, when, when we first published this... Oh, he just bought them and torched them. He said, I said how well they were selling, and he said that it was him buying them and storing them in his garage <laughs> to from, from reading them. But the... But the <laughs> Uh, well, well, what, a, what a great practice of economic genuine liberalism that is. Um, the, the, I mean, in terms of the economic liberalism so, uh, issue for the party, I mean, what frustrated me when I was working for the party is it, it just seemed year on year, this may have changed now, but basically whatever the size of the state was as a proportion of GDP, the Liberal Democrats wanted it to be just slightly bigger than that. You know, a penny, a penny on income tax for education, you know, or uh, in the 2005 general election, you know, the 50p rate, that will raise this amount of money. So whatever the level was, uh, there was never an enormous sort of leap up, there's double public spending, but it was always in that upwards direction. I've always said that I, it, it seems to me that Liberal Democrat activists can't set eyes on a post office, a hospital, or library without wanting to save it um, and run petitions to save it. So uh, to what extent are you comfortable in a party that has historically, frankly, advocated edging up the size of the state compared to whatever it's actually grown to? I mean, I get screamed at for being an extreme right winger if I'm only advocating sort of, let's return to the levels of public spending of five years ago. I think if we're fair to the party uh, and look back over the last 20 or so years, um, there have been quite significant changes in our position on that issue as the facts and the circumstances have changed. I mean, in the 1990s, when we had quite a squeeze on public spending, uh, we were arguing the case for additional spending um, supplemented by tax hikes in order to tackle areas such as education and health where there was underinvestment in inverted commas. And then there was a period where Gordon Brown started spending so much money that actually it became impossible to outbid him. Um, and it was, it was difficult to get out of that outbidding process because we'd only just after repeating the message for about 10 or 15 years got people to remember that the 1p on tax policy you know as one of the Lib Dem policies and there were people in the party as you know who said you know even though it may make sense to get rid of this economically do we really want to get rid of something that people associate with us and has generally been popular but we did do because we knew that it would be a nonsense to keep on repeating that as public spending went through the roof and we did then move to a position where we said we're not arguing for higher public spending we started to move in favour of reducing the burden of tax to people on middle and low incomes and we're now in a process where we're saying that we're going to cut public spending quite significantly over the spending review period so I think we have been more pragmatic than your uh, analysis might allow for. But, uh, uh, do you think the party accepts the post Thatcherite consensus? Well, it depends what the post Thatcherite consensus is. I mean, what, I'm not sure what you mean by the post. Well, which of Margaret Thatcher's reforms would you, in retrospect, not have supported? Uh, oh, should, we, think, should we renationalise British Airways, for example? No, I, I think that the party does uh, accept both the changes in union law and the uh, privatisation programme that took place. Um, and I don't think that there is uh, argument about those aspects of economic policy. So are you in agreement or disagreement with the Liberal Democrat president, Tim Farron, who in April of this year... Uh, in the midst of the AV referendum, uh, blamed Margaret Thatcher's, quote, wickedness on the current electoral system. He, he went on to clarify these comments by saying, I meant what I said. I certainly felt that. Uh, it, Thatcherism, was morally bereft. It was an about an assault on the industrial community. It was ideologically motivated, almost spiteful, against communities who were deemed to be the enemy within. I'm not so that's the language I would necessarily I'm use myself. I'm very glad to hear it. Uh, <laughs> but, I, but, I, but I do have to say that, you know, one of the reasons uh, why many people um, felt very angry during the 80s and are still scarred by that is that there was, and I have a very kind of clear memory myself of the impression that that period left on me, 
there was a sense that the Conservative Party had a very tough strategy to try to make the economy uh, more effective and efficient, but that there wasn't a great deal of social compassion involved. And I think also, if you look purely at macroeconomic policy rather than the privatisation programme, there was a legitimate view that macroeconomic policy in the early 80s cut into the muscle of business and industry and not just into the fat. And obviously one of the problems with that recession in the 1980s is that it led not just to a distribution of pain fairly evenly across the country or perhaps in the city in the south as the 1990s recession did, but it led to the closing down of whole industry. We weren't all in it together. We were not in it together and there wasn't really a sense that we were in it together and people didn't really feel that they had a government that uh, was concerned enough about the social consequences of, of economic policy. Is David Whitaker in the room? Otherwise I'll read out his question as well. David Whitaker, uh, so the company he works for, which I think is Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs, and he currently works on the CT policy reform. I'd be interested to hear Mr Laws's views on the lowering of the CT rate and his general thoughts on the future of the UK economy, particularly on low incorporation tax. On the, on the corporation tax rate. I mean, I think it's incredibly important for us to be competitive on corporation tax. I mean, there's no use in just looking at one single rate because you have to take the corporation tax system as a whole. And it's sometimes tempting just to focus on one part of it and end up having additional burdens on business through other parts of the tax system. But increasingly, we are going to be in a world economy where there's a great uh, ability on the part of businesses to move around, where the developing countries that people would not have wanted to site production in in the past for a whole a series of very obvious reasons are going to be far more attractive. And therefore, Britain has got to be a place where people, where mobile industries want to site themselves. And we've got to be aware of that, even, even while we grapple with very difficult public finance. Well, well let, let, let's look at some of the other taxation issues then and, and general economic issues that seem to be exercising the Liberal Democrats at the moment. One of the things I find completely bewildering, uh, I can remember back to when uh, Min Campbell was leader uh, and I was the head of press of the, the party, we sweated bullets, you were a key ally at the time, to get rid of the 50p tax policy. Uh, there was a full debate at the party conference. The party ditched its commitment to a 50p rate of income tax. Uh, lo and behold, suddenly now in government, this seems to be a sticking point for the Liberal Democrats, not even defending their own policy, which was reversed to drop the 50p rate. Where are you on the 50p I rate? Think we're going, I think our policy on the 50% rate hasn't changed in the same way as the Conservative policy on the 50p rate hasn't changed. Or for that matter, I'm not sure what the Labour policy is on the 50p rate anymore, but certainly the policy when they introduced it was that it was a temporary measure, not something they wanted to see permanently. Our, our position on the 50p rate is not that it should be a permanent part of the tax system at all. I mean, I would like to see the 50% rate gone as soon as we can reasonably do so.